There is no way, based on meeting the patient, examining them, knowing as much as you can know about the injury, of saying that this patient is going to be fine or that this patient is going to have long-term problems, other than simply saying that statistically we know that most people are going to be fine and your chances are that you're going to be in that group. But it's, if we look at the fact that as many as 2 million people a year have this type of injury, 20% of 2 million is a very large number of people that may have ongoing problems from such a mild head injury. Concussion is a term that refers to some degree of alteration of consciousness following a head injury. So typically someone is hit on the head and they will have some uh, slight what we call a disturbance of consciousness, which could be anything from feeling a little dazed or confused, having their bell rung or being dinged, all the way to being knocked unconscious, which could, act, which could last uh, anywhere from you know, a few seconds up to several minutes. One of the prominent symptoms that uh, features in mild head injury and can lead to a significant amount of disability in the long term is impairment of something called executive function. To have impaired executive function means you're going to have trouble doing all kinds of things that we take for granted, like uh, dealing with a new assignment at work, keeping a shopping list in your memory, getting your life organized. We looked at people with concussion, or with what we call a mild traumatic brain injury. Those are really interchangeable terms in, in our context. And what we did was look at these patients to try and find evidence of actual injury to the brain that related to or explained some of the important symptoms that can occur as a result of this type of injury. These patients did receive typical clinical CAT scans and MRI scans where we look at uh, brain, where we look at brain structure, we look for things like small amounts of hemorrhage that can occur in brain injury, and the brain in each and every one of these subjects was absolutely normal. So there's nothing, uh, there is nothing detectable, so to speak, to the naked eye when we look very carefully at the brains of these patients. Yet DTI uh, is so sensitive to microscopic disorganization of the white matter that it is able to show us areas of injury where there's actually structural injury, even though we can't see it with our eyes. DTI is diffusion tensor imaging, and that is a type of magnetic resonance imaging, which or MRI, which is very sensitive to the movement of water molecules through tissue, such as in the brain. Uh, it's specifically sensitive to the direction in which these microsp microscopic water molecules are moving, and allow us to infer the presence of injury to tissue that otherwise wouldn't be visible. We hope that these findings will lead to an ability to differentiate patients at the time of their injury into those who are likely to have a better or worse outcome and help in assigning those patients to appropriate therapy. It's also important to recognize that this finding is really a first step on a pathway for developing measurements that can be used to test the uh, ability of new and emerging treatments.